presence in the sanctuary. Lift your voice unto the Lord. Shout with a voice of triumph. Amen. Amen. Let's magnify the Lord.
Amen. The Bible says, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. I'm here to tell you the time will come. They will not endure sound doctrine. But I'm glad that in this church we don't have to second guess. Amen. What's going to be preached or taught in this house. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God for the word of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's exciting to be in the house of the Lord. Praise God. Look around you today. There's many that are not here yet today. Some forgot to set their clocks. Some are traveling. Some are out of town. We've got some that we need to pray for this morning. Continue to lift up Sister Crutus, my wife, on the organ. She still needs her miracle from God. We still believe that he's in the miracle working business. Amen. Praise God. If you've got a need today, amen, you're in the right place because we have a God, amen, that can meet every need in this house. He has all power in heaven and in earth. Amen. Praise God. Continue to lift up Sister Mills and Sister Vanji. Amen. So good to see you here today. We're praying God continues to heal her and touch her. Pray for Sister Dilks, one of our pastor's wives, amen, that has cancer. We are continuing to pray for her and lift her up. Brother and Sister Hunt are not with us today. They are traveling, and so please put them on your prayer list, amen, because they have a, uh, a special meeting on Tuesday. That's why they're out of town. We're praying for the Lord, amen, to work in their behalf, amen, praise God. We're praying for uh, uh, one of our sisters in Oklahoma, Anita Nolan. We want to lift her up in prayer. She needs a miracle from God. Amen. We're praying for Anna Adams today, and they put a port in her the other day. They, there's a tumor, and uh, so they believe that it is malignant, and so they have started chemotherapy. But we're praying for God to meet her need as well. Robin Miller, she's doing better, but we're continuing to lift her up in prayer. Monica Hernandez, she needs a touch from God. She needs healing as well. Uh, the uh, Gronwalds are not with us today. He just got the Holy Ghost last Sunday. We baptized him on Wednesday night. And I was speaking to him yesterday. His wife has caught the flu, and so uh, they are staying home today. They wanted to be with us in church, but we are going to lift her up in prayer that God will touch her. The Holloway family, amen, they're not with us this morning. I did not expect to see them. Uh, they just had a brand new baby boy, and they are home now, and everything went well. Sister Crutus has been in touch with them. Praise God. My sister, Debbie Crudis, uh, she is very, very sick. The doctors are saying that what she has is probably long-term, if not permanent, and she's not allowed to go back to work. She's 56 years of age, but uh, she not only needs healing in her body, she needs salvation, so we want to lift her up, amen, as well. And also Donna Halterman, this is Sister Halterman's sister in California, uh, has some broken bones. We want to pray for her. Let's remember the Brandon Galvon family and the loss of a loved one. Amen. Praise God. Any unspoken requests by the lifting up of hands, prayer for a loved one. Amen. Praise God. You got a need that needs to be met. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. The Bible says in James 5 and 14, is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let him anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Praise God. If you have a need, you'd like to be prayed for this morning. Would you like to come to an altar? Amen. Make your petition known to the Lord. Talk to the one, amen, that can make the difference. Praise God. When I come into the presence of
give him praise and honor and glory. Amen. Praise God. We love the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Need y'all to anoint Sister Crudus. Go pray for her. Brother, would you help us? Praise the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. She's been not feeling well the last two days. Amen. She's not sick as far as flu or anything like that. Amen. Praise God. She needs a blessing from the Lord. She needs healing. Praise God. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Lord, touch her right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Sister Karina, if you would get uh, Sister Naisha. Amen. Let's take her back. She's going to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ this morning. <clears throat> We're so excited. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. It's so wonderful, amen, to see people respond to the Word of God. Amen. You can't do anything better than obey. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Every one of us, amen, praise God, have to obey the plan of salvation found in the word of the Lord. Praise God. So while they are getting ready, amen, we want to acknowledge that today also after the service, uh, there is a fellowship in the back. And uh, we have nachos, and uh, we also have desserts back there. Be a good time of fellowship. This is Sister Bishop's last service with us. She will be leaving uh, Monday, uh, headed out to Kaufman, Texas, and she'll be living up there with her daughter and son-in-law. And so we want to make sure that we pray the blessings of the Lord upon her. She will be greatly, greatly missed in this church, praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Also, amen, we've got Brother Schuyler. Uh, Brother Schuyler is going to be, he's got one more s a weekend service with us after this weekend, but we're also going back, amen, in, in uh, memory of him. He's also going to, uh, uh, he's going into the Air Force. <laughs> amen. Praise the Lord. I want to see him after he gets that crew cut. Praise the Lord, because that's the first thing they do, because I was in the military, and your induction, amen, praise God, is to make you start looking different immediately. Amen, praise God. And uh, so it's a, it's a good career, praise God, but we want the hand of the Lord upon Skyler as well. Amen, praise God, because you know the condition of our world, the way that things are right now. You've got war uh, in uh, Ukraine, and you've also got a possible uh, war taking place with Taiwan and China. Uh, you've got all of disruptions around the world, and so things are heating up for what Revelations three. chapter 6 this calls. Guarantee. There's another war coming. It will be World War III. One-third of mankind will be destroyed. We can guarantee that. And so this is a day for us to pray. We pray for the nation of America. We pray for the nation of Israel. Amen. We pray for every nation, every kindred, every tongue, every people, praise God, that they would come to know the Lord through the power of the Holy Ghost, just like they did on the day of Pentecost, all through the book of Acts. And ever since then, amen, the true church has continued, amen, to believe that they must have what they received on the day of Pentecost in order to meet the Lord when he comes. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So we do have that, amen, praise God, to be thankful for that the Lord, amen, is still working in the midst of his people. There are those that are missing today, and some of them probably forgot about the time change. That's very possible, praise God. And uh, I did just the opposite. I did not know that I had a clock uh, that changed by itself. So I changed it also. And so thinking I got up this morning at 5, I got up at 3, and so I have been here early, early this morning, praise God. Got in a little extra prayer time. And so I want to be very careful, amen, praise God, that I stay awake while I'm preaching. Amen, praise God. Put a smile on your face. Praise God. Anybody excited about being in the house of the Lord? Praise God. Amen. I'm glad that I'm in the house of the Lord today. Praise God. It's so good to have Sister Shelly Joe with us. Shelly Joe, where are you? There you are. Praise God. Amen. So good to have you with us today. 
Uh, she is from Newcomb, New Mexico. She's out of one of our churches up there, and we are so honored to have her with us this morning. Praise God. Amen. Now, those that are out sick, amen, continue to pray for them because they need our prayers. Amen. Praise God. Because they would gladly change places with you in a heartbeat. Amen. Praise God. So we're just waiting now. Amen. On our sister. Amen. Praise the Lord. She's fixing to come right now. Praise God. Amen. So good to have Stephania with us today. Stephania, so good to have her with us today. This is Sister Naisha's mother. Praise God. And she came to see her today. Praise God. If you'd like to come up front, amen, and watch her get baptized in the beautiful name of Jesus Christ for the remission of her sins, amen, praise God, praise God. Amen, praise the Lord, praise God, amen. Yeah, now you hold on to his hand. Don't grab that glass. You'll pull that glass. We'll have water out here. For the remission of your sins. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I feel the touch of his hand. I know the presence of the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, there's a new name written down in glory. One more time to the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. For those of you, amen, that don't understand the power of the name of Jesus Christ, when you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are washed away. Praise God. You don't have a past. You have a present and a future with God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, there's some people today that don't understand. They'll believe. Amen. They'll tell you that we pray in the name of Jesus. You know, we lay hands on the sick in the name of Jesus. We pray the prayer of faith. Amen. In Jesus. Praise God. Because the Bible says in Acts 3 and 16, it says that heaven must receive that name until the time of restitution of all things. They'll even cast out devils in the name of Jesus. But there's a lot of confusion in our world today when it comes to water baptism concerning the born again experience and the plan of salvation. They somehow forget, amen, that they still need the name of Jesus. Church, if you're going to be baptized, might as well do it right, praise God. Let's do it in the name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee's going to bow, every tongue's going to confess. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Do you understand what just happened? Somebody just had their past washed away. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. That'd be a good song if we could sing it, praise God. In sin I wandered, sore and sad. Thank God for the blood. Find it in your book, brother. You know how to lead this. You don't even have a book anymore, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's losing his eyesight, losing his hearing. Praise God. Amen. Just pray for him. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the blood. You got it? Amen. Page 207. Hey, come on, let's greet our sister. Let's shake her hand. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's shake her hand real quick. Praise God, amen. We're so glad to see her obeying the word of the Lord. Well, Jesus, I'll never forget. Okay, now.
Thank you, Lord. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Sister Pulat's going to come and bless us this morning. Praise God. Amen. With song. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will everybody shout praise the Lord? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And serving the Lord is not an easy way. Um, there are lots of struggles you're going to find in the way. And everything that's not good, there, it's, uh, it is there. But one thing is for sure, that God is here with us and he'll be with us in that way. But, and then he wants us not to give up. Amen? Amen. This is not the time in turning back, but the time to move on. Because we are waiting. Our creator and our savior. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's not give up. Hallelujah.
The Bible says, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. The Bible says, be as steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The Bible says, amen, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Praise God. Amen. If he doesn't come today, he's still coming. Amen. Let's put our hands together. Let's clap unto the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody say Sunday school class. Sunday school teachers. You are instructed, amen, to teach the children in the way they should go. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. That little child, amen, I think we need to be reminded from time to time. We look at children sometimes and we think that, you know, they're not important. There's some people that believe that. I don't. I believe that children are very vital. Uh, they're not the next generation. They are this generation. We need to instruct them in the ways of God and teach them. Uh, moms, dads, you may not know, but that little boy that you're raising might become another Moses. That little girl that you're raising might be another Deborah that was used greatly in the Old Testament of God. Many were the women, amen, found in the Scriptures, both Old Testament and New Testament, amen, that we need to give honor to because uh, they instructed their children, amen. That doesn't let the dads off the hook either. We all need to be an example of the believer. They shouldn't just hear truth when they come to church, they should hear truth at home. They shouldn't just see the things of God at the church. They ought to see it at home. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So good to have Sister Pat with us today. Patricia, good to see you in the house of the Lord. Praise God. What are you going to do when Skylar's gone? I mean, he's the stabilizer, you know, in the house. Because I know your husband. That's right. Amen. Praise God. I remember when my two kids finally moved out of the house, I shouted the victory. My refrigerator was safe. You don't know how many times I would put something in the refrigerator and I'd say, don't touch. Come back and it's gone. And I said, did you ever consider your dad might like that? Yeah, that's why we ate it. <laughs> Amen. Let's stand for the reading of the word of the Lord. Again, we appreciate each and every one of you that are here. St Stephania, amen. We're just so glad to have you. <laughs> Praise God. You're in good company there, let me tell you. Praise God. Naisha, we had a good time on the phone the other day, didn't we, on the scriptures. Nomi, I want to thank you for what God is doing through you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Two places of scripture, the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and 2 Kings chapter 5. Amen. There's quite a few not here today. We just need to lift them up in prayer. Don't know what happened. Maybe some of them got sick. Maybe I know some traveling, some that are out sick. There's others that we're not sure of today. But the Lord knows. And so we're just going to continue to pray. But I came, amen, to rejoice in the Lord. I came to give thanks unto God. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1 should be a very familiar scripture. Amen. Praise God. If you've been in the church any length of time, you know that it takes faith to accomplish anything in your life. Amen. Without faith, we cannot do it. But with faith, all things are possible to them that believe. So Hebrews 11 one says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. I'm not here to preach, amen, a long message today. But I'm here to encourage you to believe in God. 
I'm going to try it again. Now faith, right now faith is the substance that you have and it's the evidence of things not seen. Just because it hasn't happened yet, yet we believe in the Word of God. Standing on the promises is better than sitting on the premises. If you can believe God, all things are possible to them that believe. Second Kings chapter 5, verse 1. It's an old story, but there's a grand truth found in this setting of scriptures. It takes us back quite a few thousand years. But the principles of the Word of God are still in force today. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's life. I preached on that little maid quite some time ago. And she said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. Look at her faith. Her being in chains or in captivity, being brought into servanthood, amen, did not dampen her faith in her God. And yet we allow circumstances and situations, amen, to trouble us when God simply says, only believe. Amen? Verse 9, so Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot, stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, strike his hand over the place, and recover the leper. Are not Abana and far, far rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. He got mad at the preacher. He got mad at the word of God because it wasn't according to what he thought. He said, I thought he would come out and do it this way. Be very careful. When you're, when you're thinking, amen, you start out thinking God. Verse number 13. And his servants came near and spake unto him, spake unto Naaman, my father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather then when he said to thee, wash and be clean? Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. What a tremendous story and account that we have read in the Word of God, and it's going to help us from this day forward, if we can grasp the principle that's found in this truth. Amen. Brother Hamilton, would you pray? You may be seated this morning, praise God. Amen. As I've already mentioned, I love this text. I like going back into the Old Testament because the Old, Te Old Testament excuse me, gives us evidence of things of people that had faith even though they were in trials and situations and circumstances that seemed, amen, praise God, impossible to man, and yet nothing is impossible with God. There's a principle in our text, amen, that is worthy of our attention. It's one that we cannot afford to miss. It's simple, but it's still profound. It's easy, but yet, amen, it is extreme because it brings untold blessings and benefits with it. Miracles and healings can be had even today. There are works and wonders, amen, that are on the horizon that you and I must possess, amen, praise God. A wonderful truth is found in both, amen, Hebrews and also in Second Kings. There's the ability, amen, to impact or revolutionize every church, praise God. Now, I realize I'm among the people 
people, amen, of faith. And I believe, amen, that we all believe to whatever measure, praise God. I believe, amen, that there are measures of faith. I believe, amen, there's such a thing as uh, great faith. There's such a thing as little faith. And then there's such a thing as no faith, praise God. Even Jesus charged his disciples one time of ye of little faith because of the storms that had faced them, amen, and come against them, praise God. But there's a principle tonight or today. It's a principle of the kingdom of God, and it's the power of simplicity. It has to do with just believing God and believing his word, amen, taking it for what it is. Because if we don't grasp, amen, our text today, the cripple will go home crippled, and the leper will still be leprous. If we don't grasp, amen, this principle of the kingdom of God, we're all going home the same way we came. I believe that it's the will of God that every time we leave church, we leave better than when we came. We live better with a bigger or greater understanding, with a deeper knowledge of the things of God, that no matter what happens, amen, praise God, we stand to the forefront and we just say, even so come, Lord Jesus, it doesn't matter what happens today or tomorrow. You're still, amen, the way maker. You're still the mighty bread multiplier. We still believe you're the great physician and that you are sovereign God. Our preaching involves two men. One is the man of God or the prophet of God, Elisha. The other, the captain of the Syrian host by the name of Naaman. They both play a very important part in the events uh, of our text. They both bring to light a very needed truth for our day. Because what worked then will still work today. I'm going to wait on you, praise God, amen. Sometimes we read the Old Testament and I've heard people say, but Brother Crudus, that was back then. That happened so far along ago go, amen. But we're in the New Testament, amen. I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter if it's Old Testament or New Testament. It doesn't matter if it's yesterday, today. It doesn't matter, praise God. God's Word still works whether it's yesterday, today, or tomorrow. God's Word, amen, praise God, is forever settled in heaven. Can I get a witness in the house? You ought to shout, praise God, amen, that what God has ever done, He's still able to do it today. Help me now, praise God, amen. What happened back then can still happen today. It's more than what people term as are called blind faith, but it's simple faith and obedience to the word of God. It's simply taking God at his word regardless of the situations that we face. That's why I read to you now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen yet, praise God. That means they haven't happened yet. We've got a word from the Lord. We've got a promise from the king. I don't see how it's going to happen. I don't know what's going to take place. But one thing I know, that where the word of the king is, there is power, praise God. And if God ever said it, he's going to bring it to pass. Amen. Praise God. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Faith is believing God without reason or logic or any evidence, faith seems, sees the impossible possible. Faith sees that which is hopeless actually being hopeful, the incurable being curable. Why do we still pray the prayer of faith? Why do we still anoint with oil, praise God? Why do we still stand and say, it hasn't happened yet, but God's not done yet? I'm going to remind us one more time. I know it's not Easter Sunday yet, but when Jesus was on the cross and he gave his last breath, he cried out and said, it is finished. He never said, I'm finished. In three days, he rose again, and today we still have the miracle worker with us. Some say say amen. Praise God. I still believe in miracles. I still believe that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Amen. Praise God. I'm still praying for my wife. I believe God can give her a new set of lungs. I believe that God can put her back to 100%. You're not hearing me. Praise God. I defy every demonic spirit, every lying spirit that would try, amen, to destroy my faith in God. Let me tell you something. Satan does not have the last word. Amen. God has the last word. If you'll start 
from the beginning of the Bible. In the beginning was the Word, praise God. In the beginning was God, and God spoke, amen. And God is still God, which means even in the last day, He can still speak and do a creative work today. I'm doing my best, praise God. The, our text gives us a principle of receiving everything that we need from God. It's simple. It's easy. And it not only involves God, but it involves us. Amen? I've heard people say it's too hard to live for God. Not with him, it ain't. Our text is one of the 28 miracles that are found in the ministry and life of the prophet Elisha. 28 notable miracles found in the word of God. Elijah, amen, we count 14 miracles that he performed, amen, through the power of God. Elisha, amen, praise God, who replaced Elijah, amen, gives us 28 notable miracles found in the word of God. What are you saying, praise God? God is no respecter of persons. That doesn't mean that he used Elijah more than he did Elijah what he's trying to tell us that in the last days there's going to be more works of God there's going to be more amen hey can I get a witness in the house I'm here to tell you we're not looking amen at a day of lost miracles we're looking at a day amen of great miracles that's a revelation we need to hold fast to, praise God. So we've got Elisha, the man of God, standing with Naaman, the captain of the Syrian host. Amen, praise God. There's some things that we need to comprehend. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on who Naaman was, praise God, amen, but rather what Naaman was. Now, when the Scripture says that he was in command, amen, of the army of the nation of Syria, he was very influential, and no doubt he was very wealthy. He had land, he had homes, he had possessions, but the Bible Bible says for us to pick up amen and to remember but he was a leper praise God now church I'm just going to go out on a limb and I'm going to tell you praise the Lord there's some people a man that would rather have their healing than they would their salvation but I'm here to tell you praise God come what may it doesn't matter as long as I'm ready to meet the coming of the Lord praise God but I'm here to tell you that does not negate the fact that God can still heal us God can still deliver us amen God is a way maker he can make a way where there seemeth to be no way. You got a Red Sea in front of you. I know a God that can send an east wind and part that river so that you and I can get across on the other side. Yeah. Amen. He was a powerful man known in his nation, praise God. But the Bible says that there was a little child, a maid, who had been taken captive, a little Hebrew girl who told Naaman's wife of a prophet found in Samaria who could effect a miracle cure. There's a message, amen, of being used of God no matter where you are. I'm not here, amen, to preach that message again, but that no-name maid, amen, praise God, that little girl, that it doesn't even give us her name, but I'll tell you what it does give us. It gives us her faith that in her trying situations, she still believed in God. She still believed, amen, that there was a prophet in Samaria that could recover Naaman from his leprosy. You're not hearing me. Leprosy was one of, the, one of the most dreaded diseases of its day and time. During that day, there was no known cure outside of God. And she says, he may be sick now, but I know a God, and I know a man of God, and I know, praise God, that he can recover him. Amen. She never lost her faith. She never lost her faith. They say, man. Praise God. No matter our circumstances, amen, there will always be a door of opportunity to shine for Jesus. Amen. There will always be an occasion where we can still bring glory to God. Naaman takes a journey to Samaria after hearing the word from this little maid. He brings with him, the Bible says in verse 5, ten talents of silver. I don't have time, amen, praise God, but that's over $200,000 today. He said, I'd like my miracle. I'd like my healing, praise God. Church, I'm here to tell you, what would you give, amen, for your recovery? What would you give, amen, praise God, for your salvation, praise the Lord? And we've got people today that want to live for God and say, as long as it doesn't cost me. I'm going to try it one more time. There's still a cost in Pentecost. It's going to cost you to be his disciple. It's going to cost you to live for God. It's going to take a life of surrender and submission, praise the Lord. But I'm here to tell you, you haven't seen nothing yet, amen. I have not seen or ear heard 
word, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him, praise God. On the other side, there'll be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more death, praise God. The former things will be passed away. Am I helping you any? Praise God. Amen. I'm trying to get you to get your eyes off of this plane and lift them up to that plane. Praise God. Well, we got troubles. We got troubles and persecutions. Uh, even Jesus said, amen. He said, even yet you will have tribulation. Praise God. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Praise God. Uh, hey, church, you're not looking at an underachiever here. You're looking at an overcomer here. I'm on my way to heaven. Praise God. Amen. He takes a journey to Samaria. Naaman does. Brings 10 talents of silver. Over $200,000. 6,000 shekels of gold worth over $6 million. 10 changes of apparel. King's apparel. And then not only that, all of his caravan and whatever it was, beasts and his camels and his servants all the way to Samaria to see the man of God. And now standing at the door of Elisha, Naaman comes and receives a simple message. Go to the river Jordan and wash seven times, and thy flesh shall come again, and thou shalt be clean. Amen? How simple is that? I'm going to jump ahead if that's all right with you. Praise God, amen. And the Bible says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. How hard is that? How simple is that? God will not make it so hard that you couldn't enter in. God says, I'll make it easy. All you got to do is obey. Here's my word. Listen to the truth. If you'll obey, I will wash away your sins. Woo. He's standing before the man of God, and it's so easy. Amen. That anybody can do it. The remedy and the cure was so simplistic. And Naaman's mad and turns back to Samaria. Amen. Leaving a leper. Church, I'm here to tell you, every church service affords us the opportunity to obey the word of God. What's so hard, amen, praise God, about obeying the word of God? It's so easy. It's so simplistic that Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light, praise God. It's not hard to live for God. Make up your mind, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, church, I've got heaven on my mind. I'm looking to see Jesus Christ when it comes. It's not hard, amen, to face the trial of life. I'm looking for eternal life with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm about to feel my help right now. I'm feeling the power of God right now. Praise God. Amen. Such an anointing of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now here's my message. It's found in verse 13 of our text of 2 Kings chapter 5. And his servants came near and spake unto him, If the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, now watch, you would have done it. But instead he asked you to do something that was simple. For the next few moments I want to preach on the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a principle of faith. Why can't we just go ahead and believe the Word of God and obey the Word of God? Amen. We don't have to understand all of the logistics. Amen. Praise God. I've had people say, well, I don't understand. Amen. Well, understanding will come after you obey. Just obey. Praise God. Amen. I'm here to tell you. I've had people say, Brother Crutus, that doesn't make sense. Let me try it again. The gospel of Jesus Christ doesn't make sense. It makes saints. It's simple. It's easy. Pastor, I need to be baptized in Jesus' name. What are you waiting on? It's easy. Everybody say it's easy. Praise God. I present to you this morning that Naaman's miracle was totally contingent on him doing that which was simple. Amen? It's not hard, it's not complicated. In fact, it's so easy, watch this, that children can do it. The elderly can do it. 
Oh, you're not hearing me. Praise God, amen. I baptized people, amen. How old was Sister Leslie May? I think she was 90 years old. She was 90 years old. She had come out of another denomination, a different denomination that didn't believe in the, in, in the name of Jesus Christ for water baptism. But she came to church. Someone invited her. And then within a matter of services, she says, hey, I wasn't baptized in the name. Well, that's the name that's above every name. That's the name that washes away sins. That's the name where the blood is found. That's the name where power and authority is given, praise God. Amen. And at 90 years old, she said, I can do this. I can obey the word of the Lord, and we baptized her right here in this tank at the age of 90 years old. You're not hearing me. Mama, Daddy, you're never too old to obey the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's never been hard. God has always made a way where there seemeth to be no way. He's always set before us an open door. Praise God. The miracle working power of God was contingent on Naaman's ability to believe and obey the simple instructions from the man of God. That's why I'm preaching this this morning. Amen. Because after one service and then another service, and our dear sister that got baptized this morning says, I'm going to obey. It ain't hard. It's simple. It's the way of truth. Praise God, church. Come on, amen. Come on, admit it with you. The reason why some people won't obey is because of their stinking pride. And pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. If you could get your pride out of the way and say, come on, old boy. Come on, old girl. We're going to obey the word of the Lord. God has made a way for me to have my sins washed away. It ain't hard. It's easy. Woo. Our adversary tries to convince us, amen, ever so often, praise God, that we'll never ever see our miracle. We'll never have our revival. We'll never have a move of God, that God requires some great thing from us, some superhuman feat or some act above and beyond man's ability. But God, amen, requires, amen, just simple faith, amen, praise God. Only believe and obey the word of God. Can I get an amen? We've got it into our mind that if I can only do something great for God, then I would see the miraculous and the supernatural. But I'm afraid that sometimes we even fast that way. I'm going to have to fast even 40 days to get an answer from God. Church, I'm here to tell you, we even act and pray like that sometimes. Well, I got to pray, amen, nine hours a day to get an answer from God. Can I tell you, my friend, when you submit and surrender yourself to the Lord and you repent and humble yourself before God, amen, it's not too long before you hear the voice of God and feel the tug of His Spirit. Praise God. God's not asking for some superhuman feat. He's just asking you to obey. It's simple praise God help me now praise God amen sometimes we say well I need a divine prayer amen to get a divine result well then you'll never pray it because you and I are not divine we are human amen praise God how many besides me have had times I know I've been there, I've prayed, and it seems like the heavens were like brass and I couldn't get a prayer through. But there's other times, man, I walked into that room, knelt before God, and within a matter of moments, amen, God began to minister in my life, praise God. God is showing us, amen, some things. It's not hard to pray. You just got to make this old flesh realize, praise God, that it's not in charge. Anybody besides me that has ever gone to an altar, I promise you, praise God, when you've gone to an altar and after you've prayed and talked to God, you never left saying, I wish I hadn't have done that. You walked up better better than when you came. You walked away refreshed in the Lord. You said, God has just dealt with me. God has just met with me. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to contain myself for just a few moments. God's not looking for us to move in the supernatural for him to move in the supernatural. What God wants is for us to do that which is possible. He said he'd do the impossible. You do what you can, he'll do what you can't. The impossible and the supernatural is reserved for God and God alone. 
You see, the unbelievable and the undeniable works of God are always preceded by simple faith. Amen? How many remember the story in Mark chapter 9? There's a father who has a son amen, who is demon-possessed. That oft times that, that demon would cast his son into the fire or into the water to destroy him and to kill him, praise God. And Jesus comes along the way, amen, praise God. And this man says, amen, if thou canst do anything. And Jesus says, hey, let's get it straight, praise God. It's not whether I can do it. It's whether or not you can believe that I can do it, praise God. He said, ask not, praise God. Church, I'm here to tell you, if thou canst believe... All things are possible to them that believe, praise God. It's not a matter whether God can do it. It's a matter whether or not we believe that he can do it. Amen? Anybody ever seen a miracle? Ever seen anybody raised from the dead? Sister Crudis has. I've seen two people raised up out of a coma. Amen. I had a guy, amen, that had an antenna went through his eye, lodged into his brain. And they said he's going to have permanent brain damage and loss of eye. Went in there and prayed for the man, praise God, and God healed him. Amen. It was astounding. And the doctor says, now we can't find any brain damage. We can't even find a place, amen, where the antenna went through his eye, praise God. I'm here to tell you, you're talking about a miracle working God. You're talking about a God, amen, that can do all things. Nothing's too hard for the Lord. I wish by faith we would believe God and just say, hey, it's just that simple. I believe he can meet my needs amen. amen praise God hallelujah all things God can do all things I said God can do all things praise God is anybody still interested in what God has said God just simply said he said if thou canst believe all things are possible to them that believe in Mark 16 and 19 it's an amazing and a powerful verse we quote it all the time Amen. If you will believe and obey it, Jesus said, whatsoever you bind on earth, he said, I will bind in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth, amen, I will loose in heaven. Praise God. Now, church, I got to tell you something. Sometimes we think that's beyond us. Amen. But it's not beyond God. God said it's simple. Can't you pray the prayer of faith? Can't you believe in God? Amen. That's why we have the Old Testament scriptures. We can go backwards, even the New Testament, and find, amen, praise God, where holy men of God were used by the Lord and where God did the extreme. Amen. Praise God. And it blows our mind amen and we try to reason it out you can't come to God with reason and logic I've heard people say well I'm not gonna move until I understand that's stupid my friend that's not right that's like saying I'm not gonna turn on the lights until I learn the principle uh, principles amen of electricity hey church turn on the lights enjoy the light you can learn the principles later is that all right amen Praise God. Amen. I remember Brother Ricky Reber. He told me about a service he was in. People that come to the altar were being prayed, were, were uh, praying. And some of the ministers went down and they started praying for people. And all of a sudden, a little child, a young boy, amen, walked over and began to lay hands on people. And they started receiving the Holy Ghost. Because he had that childlike faith. That faith that just says, I don't understand it. I just know it works. Amen. Jesus said, if you'll take the first step, he said, I'll take the next step. It's time for us to bind some things and to loose some things in this world. It's time, amen, for the prayer of faith, amen, to go higher. It's time for the church to be the church, amen, to get active and involved in the things of God. You remember the story in Mark 16 and 16? It was the revelation, amen, of Jesus Christ. He said in verse number 13, it says that when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some uh, Elias, and some Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. But then Jesus says, But whom do ye say that I am? Praise God. And it was Peter that said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. But here's my point, praise the Lord. At first, amen, he said, thou art the Christ. And Jesus turns around and says, that's right, and you're Peter, praise God. I've called you by name for a work, praise God. Hey, can't you believe that God has called you? Can't you believe that God's got your name? Can't you believe that you're here, not by accident, that God has brought you to this place this morning, praise God, so that you can exercise faith in the living God and get your answer? Just put our hands together and clap unto the Lord. Amen. God is just simply saying, do what you can. 
and I'll always do what you can't. I said it works, praise God, amen. And in 1 Kings chapter 17, if we were to turn, turn back a little bit, there's a famine in Israel and a drought for three and a half years, and God sends another man of God by the name of Elijah to the city of Zarephath. There's a widow gathering sticks for a last meal. There's only a handful, handful of meal left, a little oil left in the cruise. How many of you know that story? How many have read that before? Praise God. I mean, it's desperate times. Amen. She's fixing to cook her last meal, and her and her son are going to die. And watch what Elijah says. Make me a cake. Make first, and after make for thee and thy son, praise God. Hey, we're gathering our last meal. We're on our last resources, praise God. And you're telling me to make you a cake first, praise God. But hear the word of the Lord, amen. So she obeyed the word of God with simple faith, amen. And she made him a cake. And after she baked him a cake, she walks back into the house. And her meal barrel's not empty. And the cruise of all is not empty, praise God. And God sustained her faith. Amen. Amen. Musicians, get ready. Praise God. There's no way I can preach all of this today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't overlook the principle of the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Whether it's Old Testament or New Testament, whether it's yesterday or today, God has a principle that works everywhere. Elisha asks, amen, praise God, amen, what do you got in the house? It's a woman, amen, the creditors have come to take her two sons. And she says, I have nothing in the house but one pot of oil. That's all I have. And he says, I want you to go and borrow vessels, not a few. And she sent her sons out, and she went out, and she began to just gather all of the pots and the basins and the vessels that she could, praise God. And from her little vial of oil, she began to pour into this pot and fill that pot. Then she filled another pot and another pot and another pot. What are you saying, Brother Crudus? It doesn't make sense, praise God. Amen. It's beyond reason and logic, amen, praise God. But through simple faith, God brought the miraculous and the supernatural into her life. Could we not thank God and believe God? Amen. Hey, it doesn't make sense, but it's still the Word of God. Let's sing before the Lord. Well, you gotta have a woman.
Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Naaman, why are you so wroth? If he had asked you to do something great and hard, you would have done it. But he asked you to do something simple. And when he heard those words, he turned, amen, and went to the old muddy river Jordan and waded out, praise God, amen. And the Bible said he dipped himself seven times. Praise God, amen. Obedience to the word of the Lord, simple faith is all it takes. And on the seventh time, praise God, he come up and the Bible says his flesh came unto him like as of a child, praise God. He didn't just heal him. He put him back 100% praise God and that's what God wants to do through simple faith in God let's put our hands together let's clap one more time let's give God amen some praise in the house amen does anybody still believe that God still has all power in heaven and earth amen so simple so simple praise God and now sister Naisha amen the blood of Jesus Christ has just washed you clean. Praise God. Amen. You are clean. Amen. Pray. You're not hearing me. Every sin you've ever committed, every evil thought, every ungodly word, every stain that ever marred your soul has washed you clean. You came up, praise God, in a brand new creature in Christ. Amen. Praise God. You now, amen, praise the Lord, have been washed, amen, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Woo! It's easy. It's simple. Amen. Praise God. Wow. Lord Jesus, we thank you again for your word today. We thank you, Lord, for the message of hope. We thank you, Lord, for the power of simplicity. God, I'm glad to know God, Lord, that I may not understand, but I know, God, that you know how to do it, when to do it, Lord, and the way to do it. And so, God, today we thank you for the principle of the kingdom that plays all the way from Genesis to Revelations. It's just simple faith and obedience to the Word of God, and we give you praise in this house. Jesus, Lord, we're fixing to partake of some food today. We ask God again, Lord, that you would bless it, nourish it to our bodies. We're asking it in the power of the name of Jesus for the glory of God to continue on in this house. Lord Jesus, we thank you. And somebody say amen. 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 Praise God. Let's not forget right back through this door. Amen. We're going to have fellowship back here. We got nachos. We got desserts. Praise God. You can eat till you pop, but if you pop, you got to clean up your own mess. You're dismissed in the love of Jesus. Come on, let's go back here. Amen. We will be locking down the sanctuary, so take your stuff because we don't allow any food or drinks into the sanctuary.